Hey everybody, it's Mr. Loose, and your technique of the week is drapery. So drapery is a very fancy word for uh, fabric, which means like the way that the fabric drapes or hangs or falls to the ground or on the table, things like that. So if you ever see like a curtain and it's hanging from the window and it kind of hits the floor, puddles, that's like drapery, okay? That's what it means. So today I'm going to show you how to draw fabric, basically. And this is a very good skill to learn if you're drawing certain types of clothes or if you're doing interior design and you wanna draw curtains or you're doing a still life and you have a bunch of fruit or food laying on top of a tablecloth, all right? Because it's not everything is just pristine and flat and perfect, especially when it's fabric, the way that it falls, the way that it moves and interacts with whatever it's on or around it's gonna look different. So I'm just gonna show you a quick way of how to draw it. Now it's easier if you have actual fabric to look at. I do, I have a model before me, you can't see it, but I have a model with fabric laying down in front of me and I'm, it's what I'm gonna to use to look at. So if you want to practice and build this skill further, get like a towel or a sheet or maybe like a t-shirt and put a cup underneath it or just kind of crumple it up and throw it on a table or you can purposely lay it where it's up against something and kind of falls and that's a great way to look and practice. Some of you might even have clothes piled up on your floor because you didn't put them away and that's another like just the way that it looks there you could draw from that and use that as an example okay so those are just some different ways to look at fabric to practice. So first thing we're going to do is the block method. So I'm going to just kind of draw like an outline of the fabric. I'm drawing like the folds. Okay. And this is just, okay, so I just drew like a block. All right, like a block, like basically an outline of the fabric, which a lot of you can do. You, if I was, if you had a crumpled up towel on your table and I asked you to draw that, you could draw the outline of it, but it looks kind of flat, right? It doesn't really look like it has much to it. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to start adding some shading to it. And the shading is where, hold on, let me finish my outline, is where you can go in and really start to make it look like it's coming alive. So I actually have a window over here. So the light is hitting the drapery that certain way. So I'm gonna go in and against the crease right here, I'm gonna go in and just color in some shading. And as you probably remember with shading, you wanna go in and the furthest away from the light, or anything that's hidden from the light, it's gonna be darker, that's gonna be your shadow. So I'm going in with some shadows. And this is better if you use an actual real pencil, not a mechanical pencil like I'm using, but I can't seem to find a pencil that works. That, so, you know, just make and do. Okay, going in here shading a little bit, because this is, Kind of like a crevice kind of hidden in there and now this part while it's not while the light is coming from this direction this is like a fold so this part is kind of hidden from the light so i'm just gonna go in drawing little shadows there's gonna be one right here okay mm -hmm. and folds. I even have some over here where it rests on the table. There's a lot of lead today. Just another little piece of fabric right there. Okay. To 
a little bit more dimension because it makes it look more three-dimensional. Okay, so then what we're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to start adding in those middle tones. Okay, the middle tones is not the shadow, which is the darkest furthest away, and it's not the um, highlight, which is the brightest spot. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and add those middle tones. And you want it to slowly go from dark to light. Remember, you don't want it to be like such a huge, intense contrast. Slowly changing from one to the next. Now I'm coming out, so I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter. Remember, your metal tones are not, there's not just one, there's several different lightness and darkness, which is also called value the lightness and darkness of an item or subject matter in your art. in a little bit but don't get too crazy with the finger blending I had uh, some a lot some people are like ah, don't do that that's a bad thing to do and then some people are like it's okay it's okay if you do it but don't get too crazy don't like smudge to death which a lot of people tend to do when they they don't know that they can smudge as an option and then when they find out that they can then they just go crazy and then before you know it, the whole thing is just like intense with shadows and mid-tones and like you still want to make sure you have a little bit of raw paper in there and it sometimes it's better to just kind of blend it in if you wanted to go in and do some cross hatching you could do that that would also make it look really good okay you also don't want to overwork something and that means where you just continue to work and work and work and work over and over and over in the exact same spot. That's bad. You don't want to do that because then you're just going to end up doing like all of this work to this and then the rest of it's left alone. Okay. So we can come back to this later, but I'm going to go and work on some of my other parts. I'm going to work on I'm doing my midtones over here. It's going to look a little different because the light's going to be hitting that differently. And it's always easier to add more than to take away. So just you're just slowly building it up. Okay, I'll let my eraser a little bit. Mmm, that's nice. Alright, and then I'm gonna add some folds over here. Give it just a little bit more character and make it more dramatic. Give it some movement. to be a little bit lighter here so really you're just kind of going in and 
you just draw the outline, block it, and then you're just shading in. And maybe even erasing certain parts, making certain things darker. But you don't want to make it too dark in certain places, because this might be getting hit by the light, but not that much. And, I, and I'm looking at my source. I'm looking at the fabric that I'm drawing. I'm not just sitting here drawing and not looking at it, because if I'm re reproducing something that's actually in front of me, then I want to make sure that I'm w looking at what I'm drawing to get it accurate. Otherwise, it's not going to match up. It's going to look like what I want to see and not what I'm actually seeing. But sometimes we think, oh yeah, I know what this looks like. I know how to draw a piece of fabric and folds on it. And then you're like sitting there and you're working on it, you're working on it, working on it. And then you look back and you're like, okay, that, why does that not look like anything that I, like, like, oh yeah, my drawing looks great. And then you look and compare it to what you're actually drawing. And you're like, that looks nothing like it. Well, that's because you weren't looking at it. You were drawing what you think the folds look like, not what they're actually looking like. And especially when you're doing something specifically with light and the way that the light is is touching it that's that's a big 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 big, 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 big deal because light is funny that way you think you know what it's doing but let me tell you light if not done correctly cannot look like it should kind of going in. It looks rough right now, but bear with me. I'm going to go back in. Uh-oh. And I'm just kind of doing an overall shade. I'm going to go back in and refine this. So for those of for my uh, friends out there who are going, oh my god, what are you doing? Just be patient with me. Do, 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 do. A little bit of cross hatching. I kind of like this rougher cross hatch look. So, so you see there's multiple ways you can shade. You can do something a little bit rougher or something a little more smooth and pristine. I am all about this, but I've already started this other way, so I'm just going to stick to it. Don't want to, you know, mix things up too much. Okay. Okay, I can go in and kind of smooth it out. Up, draining it over a little bit. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I was doing the cross hatching, when, the, when I was going this way and then I went the other way, I didn't keep it all within the same exact. Like I even extended this direction a little bit outside of that direction right here because I wanted this to be darker because it's further away from my light. And then I did a little bit less of just one direction of cross hatch right next to it which is a little bit closer to the light because it's going to get lighter because the further away from the light source. So if we had the sun or the light bulb over here, this part's going to be lighter than this part because it's further away. So I added just a few more layers on the part that's furthest away. And I'm also going in and I'm trying to get rid of that outline. That outline is great when you are starting to just like plan out your design and sketch it out. But then eventually, you want that outline to go away because you want it to look more realistic. Because there isn't an actual outline on things. We want our heads, or our minds, that is, puts it together that like, oh yeah, that's, you know, I can, like the outline of the face. Or like, the outline of, you know, the tree or whatever. But like, in reality, there's not an actual outline. So, when it's... Important that when you're doing something, especially, I mean, if you're doing like more of an animation style or something more graphic, then yeah, that's fine. But when you're doing something realistic, there's not an actual outline in real life. So you have to be mindful of that when you go in. And so now I'm going in and I'm adding my shadows. Do, 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 do. 
do do. It just takes a lot, and I mean a lot of patience. And I'm like getting really into this. I mean, you could do it like if you want. I I I know it's gonna be a process, and it's not something that some of you are going to be really into. But with this skill you could really blow some socks off with like whoa like you start you add in the proper amount of shading and you just start practicing drawing like fabric like and you just keep practicing and practicing and practicing like anything you just keep practicing and you're going to get better at it it's you know you don't you don't learn how to throw a ball one day and then go sign up for the major leagues you it takes time you have to build those skills and practice and slowly get better at it okay so now i'm gonna you know i'm gonna go, i'm gonna go in up here and i'm just going to erase a little bit like that and that's going to be my highlight okay you can tell poop lights right there so i'm gonna add that I left that off all right that's looking pretty good I'm probably gonna go in here shade this a little bit more the light is here so I'm not gonna get too crazy dark but it is tucked away inside this fold so it's gonna be a little bit more there on the actual table that's also going to be like that so and i'm not going to get into the 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 table or the space but you get the idea so then you have your fold of fabric so if you wanted you go back in and lighten up the edge So it does give the impression that it's, you know, it's there, but it's not as boldly outlined. Or, you know, that could be like the shadow of the other side. And voila, there you have a fold of drapery. So now I want you to try this. Don't be scared. You've got this. It's not as intimidating as it may look. It takes practice. It may not look exactly the way you wanted at first, but just try it out and then try it again, all right? Go get them, guys.